Welcome to another edition of Ask doTERRA. I'm thrilled to have Dr. David Hill join me to talk about the proper usage of oils. We have had countless questions asking about not only how to use them, but the proper use, if there are times to dilute or when not to dilute, and other ways to get the most out of your doTERRA experience. So Dr. Hill, thank you so much for being with us today. We'll just start with the basics. There's three ways to use the essential oils, what are they? Sure, we can use them topically, they can be used aromatically, and I also believe they can be used internally. I know I use them uh, all three ways each and every day. Um, let's start with, with aromatically. That's probably the most popular way uh, to use them. What are, the, what are the benefits? What are, what are you doing? Does it just smell nice? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> Um, it, is, it is the most popular way to use the essential oils, and I would argue it's one of the most powerful ways to use the essential oils as well. I think sometimes people believe that using oils must be difficult, it must be complicated, but in reality, even the simplest of usage models, in this case, just diffusing an essential oil or breathing in the aroma, it can be one of the most powerful and effective ways. So you can affect, affect entire body systems by using it aromatically, just like we can in any of the other methods as well. I like using the oils aromatically because it's such a direct impact almost immediately upon the respiratory system of the body. It gives us great support, helps the body to be able to function the way that it was designed to. I like using it aromatically because we get this equally powerful influence associated with our emotions. And that can be something as in terms of our health or even just forget about health, good health or poor health, just in a reactionary state, we're all gonna have this different cycle of emotions and outcomes that we're gonna deal with. Having something that's such a powerful influencer and so simple and easy to do, right. just by breathing the aroma of an essential oil, I think is key. And it's powerful for people, and that's why so many people like using them that way. That actually has been quite amazing for me in my journey with doTERRA is um, I, I really rely upon, you know, either cedarwood or lavender or serenity. When I, when I go to bed at night, I bring diffusers wherever I travel because it, it really brings me to a state I want to be in. And likewise, um, when I'm really trying to plug hard and, and work through some issues, you know, to put on some Motivate or some wild orange and peppermint and some of my other blends that have sure. just really speak to my body and, and, and have such an immediate uh, productive effect. Well, I think there's a couple of key points to make there. One is, of course, the immediacy of the outcome that we see. It's very fast acting. There's a tremendous amount of safety also involved with that, though. We can diffuse the essential oils or we can take advantage of the aroma of the oils almost any time that we want to. So I like that we have a fast effect and that there's a great margin of safety with that. I know that in my home, we diffuse essential oils a great deal. We sometimes diffuse them with specific purpose. Maybe we've had our grandchildren over and some of them are not feeling well and so we'll diffuse an oil like On Guard to just help bolster and boost everybody a little bit and make sure that we're as healthy as we can be. Other times we're diffusing oils like a citrus oil because it is energizing. The other key point that I would make with the essential oils and aromatic use is there really is no wrong way to do this. It does allow us to key in very specifically to the preferences that we have. I, I'm confident, I, I might not like all the same oils that you like, but I'm also confident that you receive the same benefits that I receive, and I get to choose what oils that I like. And the fact that I can choose the aroma that I like that's most beneficial for me, whether that's uplifting or even calming and soothing and relaxing, this is also applicable to every single member of the family. It doesn't have to be an isolated model. I can, as a whole family, we can, within our environment, experience the value that comes from oil. So for me, if the message I would give would be, if you are new to essential oils and you're trying to learn about the essential oils, what your likes and dislikes are, Aromatic use is one of the simplest, safest, and most effective ways that you can use them. 
You know, the, uh, I, I need to move to topical, but I'm, I'm using uh, the essential oils in a new aromatic way. I'm trying to sell my home, and so we've got diffusers <laughs> hidden everywhere, and our realtor is like, this is amazing. Like, you walk in and you just feel, you know, you walk into the bedroom and you got serenity maybe. You walk into the kitchen and there's... It's like a, a citrus orchard in there. And what's the address of your home, Kirk? And buyers <laughs> right. beware. Buyers beware. It would be great for anyone listening. No. <laughs> you know, some people bake cookies. You just diffuse essential oils. So that's probably perfect. But honestly, I, as my realtor said, I can't see why every realtor in America is not using doTERRA to sell their homes. Anyway, there's a lot of ways to use oh, aromatic use of essential oils. Um, topical use. That's the next stage. You said beginner use, aromatic, hard to do it wrong, and, and immediate benefits, topical use. Well, I like topical use because if there is a, if there was a desire that people had with the essential oils, it's always to be very targeted and be very specific in what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And one of the things that I found with using the essential oils topically is it, it allows me to have direct access. If, for example, I have some support that I need to give to a knee or to an ankle or to muscles that maybe I've overworked, using the oils topically directly in those areas is wonderful because I get support where I actually need it. The common belief, however, Kirk, is that, well, because I'm targeting it to a specific area on my body, that must be where the only effect or benefit of that oil is. And that would be erroneous to think that whether we're using them topically or aromatically or even internally, there's a localized benefit. In other words, there's some primary things that we see, but there's also going to be a more broadcast or a wider benefit that comes to the body as a whole. So even though we get the advantage of good targeted application, I still get some whole body effect. And I'll tell you the other thing I like about using the oils topically. It's almost like I get the best of all worlds in that I also get to take advantage of the aroma right. at the exact same time. So I like using the oils topically for that reason. Now, when I, the, the targeted use made sense immediately, immediately to me when I started. And, and I've had some knee issues and, you know, put it there and, I could go for a run, I, when I came back, it would feel better. Um, and, and people like you and others were saying, you know, the bottom of the feet is another great way, great place to, to put it on. Why is that? Why is the bottom of the foot the, uh, this magical place? You know, it's interesting <laughs> to me as I hear people talk about some of these things, because you can imagine that there's almost as many different philosophies as there is essential oils that you could choose from in terms of which oil I would use for which circumstance. Using the oil on the bottom of the feet does get a little bit into body physiology and the structural uh, issues of the body, and not really issues, but how the body is structured. You know, when we apply essential oils topically, there is some absorption, there is some penetration, and it's how they move into and how they move through the tissues is what we're referring to specifically. Those top layers of your skin uh, as the oil is able to absorb into those depending on the thickness it may take a long period of time it may take shorter periods of time in that layer of tissue we can use for example more caustic oils like oregano on the bottom of the feet is probably not in any way cumbersome or difficult for people but oregano was actually difficult for me. I used that on the bottom of my feet, and my wife said I couldn't sleep in the same room with her that night. <laughs> well, she actually called me and wanted to know which oil I would recommend so that she could have that argument for you. Oh, that's so it how was perfect. It <laughs> well, sometimes the oils can be a little bit sensitive, and yeah. so I like using them on the bottom of the feet because we lose some of that sensitivity to the oil, even some of the more caustic ones. The other reason for using it on the bottom of the feet, for example, with really young children, while I might still want to use the oils topically as a preferred method, the bottom of the feet is a really safe place to apply the essential oils. So not only is it effective, but it's also very safe. So I like, if I don't know and I'm new to the essential oils, or if I'm unsure how my child or another family member is going to respond, the bottom of the feet is a good, safe place, but yet gives access to the body as a whole. Thank you. So we've, we've talked about aromatically, and every essential oil can be used in that way. 
Uh, topically, uh, again, every oil can be used that way, although you may want to dilute some of the so-called hotter, hotter uh, some oils. Some of the more caustic and, oils, certainly. And uh, let's, maybe let's talk about that for just a minute, because yeah. this is a question that I think a lot of people have. Should I dilute an essential oil? Do I have to dilute an essential oil? I, can I make a more overarching statement, and that is that one of the things that has been really, I think, curious for me to learn and experience now over many years of using the essential oils, not just individually, but in a practice model and in the environment of medical use of the essential oils, it's been interesting to me how people respond and react differently, not just to different essential oils, but to the different methods of using the essential oils. I've really kind of come to the conclusion, Kirk, that I think people have personal preference. I like using the oils topically, and I like using the oils internally. I also like using them aromatically. I'm a little bit like you. I use all three, but I use all three to meet my specific needs. I know other individuals whom, as I speak with them, maybe about using the oils internally or using them aromatically, their definite preference is, no, I want to use them topically. Tell me how I use them topically. And for a while, while I believed that that must be happening because they just don't know what I know or they just haven't had the experience that I've had, I've come to really think of this differently. No, I haven't had the experience that they've had. And that means that people always are going to work within their own level of comfort, within their own knowledge base. And so it's reasonable for people to have a progression of their usage models where I might start aromatically, I might use some of the oils topically, but I'm always going to dilute them. Eventually, well, I would dilute this one, but I may not dilute this one. I sometimes hear people say that this is an issue of safety. You have to dilute because of safety. For me, it's an issue of physiology. If how, knowing how the essential oils absorb and move through our tissues, when I dilute an essential oil, it does an effective job of holding it in, in reservoir, if you will, within the tissues locally. That means that I can have a real true localized benefit. It begins to metabolize, the enzymes begin to work locally where I apply the essential oil. It's much more sluggish through the tissues which gives us the advantage of a usage model more appropriately so where I put it or where I placed it. I may not always want that, and so in which case I would choose not to dilute the oil but might use it undiluted because it would move a little bit quicker, not as sluggish through the tissues as a simple way to describe it. Is it safe to use an oil undiluted? Is it safe to, must you always use an oil in a diluted form? I think that can be as varied and the opinions will differ as many people and as oils as there are. My experience has been that there's room for both. But I'm always going to be the person who encourages people, if you feel better about diluting essential oils, I think you should. And I think you should for a very simple reason. Not because it changes a safety value or perception. It may or may not. And that may not be the case with all oils. That is, however, what you feel most comfortable with. And I would rather that somebody, Kirk, diluted an essential oil than I would they just looked at it on the shelf and didn't bother to use it. So I think we've got to be a little bit understanding of when we start talking about usage models of essential oils, people are always going to work to the level of their experience. Yeah. And maybe our greatest opportunity with them is not to convince them that they should use oils how I use them or you should use oils how this person uses them, but rather to help them be able to use oils the most effectively that they can within the level or within the model that they would like to use. Let's move quickly to dilution. I was able to, to accompany you to a couple of cities uh, about a year ago, and you talked about the benefits of dilution, besides the fact that it you know, can make you more comfortable and, and if you're sure, a little sensitive sure. to a, a more caustic oil. And that has really helped the way I've used it. Um, you used the term wellness capacity. Can you explain what that is? The body has a finite capacity for metabolism. Anytime we introduce anything into the body, it doesn't matter whether it's food or essential oils, it could be anything that we introduce to the body, it is going to need to be metabolized. 
Now, this is a concept that helps you understand that the body has a finite capacity associated with it. And we always need to work within the limits of that capacity. And so what I might use as an essential oil, whether I use it diluted or I use it undiluted, how much I use really does become this individualized process. Something that to me might not be overwhelming at all, to you might be completely overwhelming. Yeah. And so when we talk about wellness capacity or our body's ability to metabolize properly and fully, and when we talk about metabolism, Kirk, we should define that Clearly, in a medical sense, we would define that to mean not how the body expends energy necessarily, but how the body creates energy, how the body cleanses itself, and how the body heals itself. And so it's important that we not only support those processes through good nutrition and through lifestyle, but when we're using the essential oils, that we're careful not to detract from those processes. And that's why I speak a lot to when we're using the essential oils about understanding your own capacity, understanding how your body reacts and responds, understanding what your needs are, and not so much worrying about what your neighbor's doing or what some other person has said that they felt like you ought to do. We, there is a little bit of a learning curve with the essential oils. I think there's some constants. The constant is, is that we know that there's great safety. I, I'll give you a good example. In doTERRA, one of the things that I have responsibility for is of course, all the adverse events that occur with essential oils. And I'm really pleased that in the last several months, we've sold tens of millions of bottles of essential oils, and yet any type of a unwanted response, I don't even use the word adverse, I use unwanted response. That can be everything from, gee, I just didn't like the way this oil smelled after all, to it didn't produce the outcome I wanted, and I'm really not sure that it helped me. It can be any of those and everything in between, and we're at 0.0072%. That's negligible. Right. So we know a constant with doTERRA essential oils has been the safety. And we also know a constant has been the efficacy or the benefits that people receive, the potency of the essential oils. I think the variable comes into our own individual capacity, and I think we can misjudge that from time to time. Don't doubt yourself would be my message. Don't doubt your own ability to understand how your body is reacting and responding. And so this concept that I've introduced is about teaching people how to learn to be in tune with what their body needs, but more specifically, how they are reacting and responding. If, if you feel or sense something different, chances are you're probably correct. And you should pay attention to that. And you'll always work well within those limits is what I found. There is this optimal range of usage of essential oils. And while that range may fluctuate, it may be different for me and it may be different for you. And so it sometimes is difficult to tell, well, exactly how much should I use? I think this is on the coattails of that there's a proportional relationship with the benefits we receive and the amount of essential oil that we use. And so that initially I might use an amount of essential oil and the benefit I receive is proportional. But we know now from study and research of the essential oils that there's a crossover point where that relationship becomes a little bit disproportionate. And the more I use does not necessarily any longer mean the more benefit that I receive. And that as we cross over that threshold, that threshold is what I mean by metabolic capacity. And as we cross over that threshold, now there's this opposite view that comes into effect that the more I use does not necessarily mean the more benefit I'm gonna receive. And in reality, I may use enough that no longer am I receiving benefit or I am having some unwanted outcomes. So how do we determine where that optimal capacity is, right? What is the ideal amount for Kirk Jowers? What's the ideal amount for Dr. Hill? That's where we've got to use this individualism in our own experience. But there's ways that we can tell. It's so not working in the tell? blind. Because my, my wife has pointed out this chart to me when, you know, I start going through an entire <laughs> tube of past tense on my forehead. Uh, and she says, that is too much. You are definitely on the well, wrong side well, of Dr. Let's, Hill's chart right now. Uh, let's take past tense <laughs> as an example. I might use past tense because I'm feeling a little irritated or I'm having some discomfort that has occurred. 
And so I can use a little bit. And if, if the discomfort, let's say, is persisting, I might need to use a little bit more. But there comes this point where while I'm, I'm feeling good, and if your philosophy is like mine, I sometimes if I'm feeling well, I feel like, well, then I could use more and I'll feel even better. Right. That may or may not be the case. And if we cross over that threshold, now we go from really feeling I felt well to now maybe I'm feeling a little bit irritated. I'm feeling a little bit agitated. And as I continue, then I might even start having some of those unwanted outcomes that I talked about earlier. So it's a threshold that we gauge not on a specific number, but a threshold that we gauge on my individual perception of how I'm feeling, depending on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So if it's more energy, I can use a little bit more, a little bit more, I feel energized and I'm feeling really well and I feel good and I'm, I'm feeling like I've accomplished what I need to, but using more, I once again might begin to change some of those outcomes for me, then I know I've crossed over that threshold. So it's going to be a variable that is a fairly constant thing. And while it sounds like it can become complex and difficult because, gosh, there's so many oils and there's so many ways to use the oils, in reality, it really isn't. There's this intuitive sense that comes with the oils. And I really encourage people to focus very heavily on that intuitive sense that they have I just naturally, and I've, granted I've used oils for many years, but I just naturally reach for, and I, I need a little bit more, I need a little bit less, and I need a little more often. I need to be diffusing an oil right now. Let their own experience be their guide, and I think people will find that not only can they use oils safely, but they can use oils in ways that they didn't think that they could or that they would before. Uh, thank you. I'd like to end with, we, we talked about dilution and the benefits and reasons for doing that. Uh, you've also talked about enhancement techniques where you really want to get kind of maximum benefit out of them. What are some of these techniques that you encourage people to try as they get more comfortable with you? Well, I, I'm actually glad you brought that up. One of the things that we could talk about is, let's go back to aromatic use. We know that a lot of the compounds that we experience are not only are they volatile, but that we experience those very quickly, like a citrus oil. And that means if we apply an oil topically, we might be getting a lot of that aromatic benefit, but a lot of that might flash off. And so there's some things we can do if we're using the oils topically specifically that will enhance the amount of essential oil that we're able to utilize directly into the skin. So one would be to apply the oil with some type of a friction massage, just a light rubbing back and forth. We don't have to get in and work the tissues unless you really want to, but right. just something as simple as a friction massage. Applying the essential oil in a model of dilution keeps a lot of it from flashing off and holds it in suspension and holds it directly in those tissues for longer periods of time. Using some type of an occlusive dressing is another thing that we can do that once again prevents a lot of that flash off. So oils on the bottom of the feet, shoes and socks back on is a good way to take full advantage of the oils topically. And then one of the other things that I do from time to time, I don't know that it's appropriate in every single case, but something that people might consider doing is using some type of a heat with the essential oil. Now, you got to be a little bit careful here and use some common sense. Right. <laughs> we don't want any scalding hot towels being thrown on anybody, and unless, of course, you're really mad at your spouse, then maybe that might be what you consider doing. But just a, a warming a heat pack or something else will also help. Stimulates blood flow, which, of course, stimulates greater absorption and capacity of the oil to be utilized in a more broad sense through the body. So there's some very simple and easy ways we can do to enhance almost any of the techniques that we'd like to use for the essential oils. Thanks as always. I always learn a lot uh, getting to talk to you about the essential oils. And thank you for joining us on another episode of Astoterra. Mm -hmm.